Hello everybody and welcome back to the shop. This is a bike stand that I made a while ago. I'm not the first one to make these or invent these, but I do find them very useful and I need to make another today. So I figured I would show you how I do it. I have seen like, you know, a couple of slight variations of this design, but they're all basically the same. Um, the nice thing about it is, is you can use the front or the back wheel to hold your bike up and you know, it's fairly stable. It depends on how tight you make it. This, this I would say is about, about right. Holds the bike up just fine, but it also is fairly easy to pull the tire in and out. The only kind of negative thing you could say about these maybe is that they're not adjustable. So it really needs to fit in this case. It's a 26 inch, 2.1 inch wide tire. So I'm planning on making a copy of this one basically using the same dimensions and everything, which will make it easier to, to reproduce. Now one of the real nice things about making these stands is you can use just the worst wood you can find. Like I found this at the construction site next door, you know, some scrap they had and it's going to be just fine for this purpose. That was how I made the other one as well. What I need is a 16 inch piece, a 16 inch piece, a 20.5 piece and another 20.5 inch piece. Uh, I already marked my cuts where they're going to need to be except for in the case of this one. And the reason why is because these ones don't really matter too much because these are the ends. They can be shorter or longer. It's not, doesn't matter. This one can be different lengths. It can be 20.5 20 or 21. It can't be too small, but it can be slightly too big. But the important thing is, is that the second lengthwise piece needs to be pretty much exactly the same as this one. So what I'm going to do is cut this one first and on the chop saw, make sure the next one is exactly the same. So let me go ahead and cut these three pieces up. It, but before that, I'm actually going to throw these on the ground and sweep them with the broom. They do have uh, some dirt and soil on them. I mean, you can certainly cut through that, but it's not that good for the saw blade. So I'm going to just throw these on the ground, sweep them up, get some of that, that uh, dirt off, and then I'll go ahead and chop them. All right, that'll probably do. I knocked off some of the dirt. Now, of course, you don't have to have a chop saw like this to do the job. Really, anything would work. Could use a circular saw or even a hand saw. But the chop saw does make nice, straight, easy cuts. This one, I, this saw I picked up for, I think, $25 or something like that used. It's not, you know, super nice, but hey, it does the job. Yeah, this is my 20.5 inch piece and I want this piece to be the same. So I'm um, not going to use either of the ends because both of them have nails. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just chop off arbitrarily after these nails somewhere to get that out of the way and I'll have a nice clean cut. I can stick it, I can stick the piece that I know the length that I want to have on top like that, slide this back here bring the blade down and then press up against it like that. And so with my left hand here, I can feel those are virtually exactly in the same position. And now this saw blade is pretty much right against there. So now if I cut, let me just move the camera, whoop, try to move the camera to make sure you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah. So now you can see if I make the cut right here, they'll be exactly the same size. So holding this down, I'll move this one out of the way and go ahead and make that cut. And as a result, you can see they're virtually exactly the same height. Okay, so now at this point, I usually lay the stand out how I think I want it, you know, considering chips and different stuff like that, whatever side might look nicer or whatever whatever side's smoother. You kind of want these to be probably the most good condition of any of the sides so that the, the tire has the right contacts. 
Um, now at this point you do really need to do some figuring, take your measuring tape out and you have to do your figuring, figure out you know what the spacing is. I happen to know already because I have a reference stand, but you'll want to get the tire of your bike and actually sit it in there. Maybe somebody will help need to help you so you can figure out what exactly that best width is going to be. And what I found is it just needs to rub a little bit on both sides. But for me, it's a little bit easier in this case because I have a reference one. So I'm just gonna go grab that one and do the measurements like that. I'm actually gonna use nails. I prefer to use screws when I can, but I don't have any more screws that are long enough. So I'm gonna go with these nails. And I did use some in that one as well, and it, they did work fine. These are pretty big nails. I think these are like uh, three inch. Let's see. Yeah, I guess three inch. Uh, so they're plenty long. In fact, they don't even need to be that long, I would say. And I like to do a pilot hole. I'm not a woodworker. I'm not really sure if this is recommended and it's certainly not necessary on this kind of like soft uh, pine lumber, you know, material. But I like to do it anyway. I just find it makes it a lot easier. So I just grabbed like the longest, skinniest drill bit I could find. Uh, in standard, it's a 0.116, whereas the nail is 0.15. So it's, it's, I think, decently, you know, small enough that the, the nail will still be able to work well. All right, and so I'm just gonna hold this kind of steady as I can on a flat surface such as the concrete here, flat enough anyway. And I'm just gonna drill two holes just like that. I believe uh, doing the pilot holes will, first of all, to make it a lot easier to hammer these nails in, but secondly, it'll decrease the likelihood of having any splitting in the wood. But I am not any kind of woodworker, so if you guys know better, um, yeah, let me know. So what I'm doing here is I'm just stepping on both of them so that they don't move, so I can just drive this nail right in. All right, it did move a little bit as, as I was hammering, but uh, hopefully it'll be okay. I'm really putting most of my weight on this thing. I could even do that if I wanted, I guess. But I, I think this will do that. That feels very sturdy, there's no movement. So that's fixed, that's done. Now the next one's the more important one because that's sizing, you know, the size of the actual gap. So here's where I need to be more careful when I do the drilling and when I do the nailing, you know, to get it in the right place. Anyway, I'm trying to use my calibers here to get this as accurate as I can. It was about 54 millimeters on the other one. Measure twice. Yep, so I'll make this one about 54 as well. Just like that. So this is exactly how I want it. So I think I'm just gonna actually put my foot on it again and do my pilot holes on this end as well. Try not to move anything, okay? That looks pretty good. Only thing about that is I can't really see can't really see too good. There we go. Now I can see where the end of that other 2x4 is. Let's go ahead and do a pilot hole right there. Now this last part, of course, is totally optional. But I like to paint my stands so I can kind of tell which bike they go to. Her bike isn't green, but it's kind of tealish, so... We're going to go with green. I usually find this construction lumber kind of absorbs the paint, so I usually like to do two coats on it. The first one will be kind of light and ugly usually. it's all done and this is where it's gonna be let's see how it works this other bikes in the way but so it should go like that goes in like this so well oh, that's gonna work so there you go that's a simple bike stand you can make with any kind of junk 2 by 4s you have pretty simple tools that you can use realistically and uh, it's pretty good. I find them really useful. This is now my one, two, three, fourth one I've built. 
If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions on how I can even improve the design, please do let me know, do let me know down in the comments. All right, thanks everybody for watching. Till next time, bye.